This look at Hero Me is brought to you by the Frozen Sonic Mini 8KS resin based 3D printer. Here's Andy and Hero Me. I'm here at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival and I'm next to my friend Andy. Now, Andy has Hero Me, and this is where I say, Andy, what is Hero Me? Well, Hero Me is a couple of things. Number one, it's an awesome part cooling system, but there's a lot of people with cart printing systems, they think they're awesome. Sure. But what's really unique about my system is that it's a modular system that supports 100 printers, 46 hot ends, 34 extruders, 16 ABLs, 9 accelerometers, 36 part fan setups. When you multiply it all out, it comes out to an astounding, crazy, unbelievable 35 billion possible setup combinations. This is like Lego for it, it's hot exactly, ends. It's exactly. It is Lego modular blocks for hot ends, uh, extruders, uh, and part cooling. Where did where did Hiromi start? Did you have a crazy idea? Is this a passion project, or how did this begin? Okay, so it started uh, in 2017, um, and a very original design was done by uh, a gentleman from Costa Rica, and he did the design, and I worked with him on it. Uh, but he um, had a baby, so he left. 3D printing for a while. I spoke with him a couple of months later and said, hey, I'm continuing this, can I take this over? And he said, yeah, I gave him a blessing. So at that point in um, late uh, October 2018, I got started creating Hero Me uh, and working on the part cooling and making it work for the printer I had. And Which was what? Uh, CR10. This was, yeah, CR10. Uh, and then I had friends ask me, well, gee, can you do it for mine? And so I'd make a bespoke version for them. And, uh, you know, grew on. So I have very little hair because I did a whole bunch <laughs> of bespoke systems. Finally, I get my act together and say, gee, this ought to be a modular system. So what I, over the last four or five years I've spent is researching printers, researching gantry adapters, researching hard ends and extruders, and making all of the component parts in a way that you can mix and match any way you want, and it'll all just work. And it's symmetrical, so you can go left or right with the ABL sensors, or out front, um, and yeah, everybody's got their, for those who are upgrading, everybody who's got their own preference of an extruder or a hot end, I've got a system that allows them to put them together. They don't have to go build it themselves or find somebody that's got that exact combination. I find it fascinating because building a bespoke system for someone is one thing, but taking that and making it modular to accept the billions of combinations that you told me about, that is staggering. How did, how did you approach taking a bespoke one-off and creating a modular system. What was that magic moment that let you get to that point? It was um, speaking with a lot of friends who were not yet patrons uh, uh, and with a couple other designers, getting feedback from other designers to go, well, this works, this doesn't work, hey, you should try this. So it was, in that sense, I had a lot of collaborative input from people to help me improve it. Um, and we're at generation seven now, actually 7.3.2. I just released 36 hours ago the 7.3 release with 147 new uh, STLs of new parts for new, uh, new printers, etc. 147 new STLs. Right. And then 48 uh, updated STLs. The library is a little over 500 parts now. Gen 6, it was over 600. And I, in the Gen 7 design, we were able to cut it way back down and not lose any compatibility. But the key thing here, it's not just about the modularity. It is also about really effective, efficient, best-in-class part cooling. Because at the end of the day, uh, that's you, know, you want to have your tools, but you want to get a great part, and the parts that need to be cooled need to have proper part cooling. And a lot of work went into the design of the ducting to create a laminar airflow to make it so that it merged and blended kind of in an inverted Y so that there was no turbulence. And the reason you know I started and got involved in this is because all of the manufacturers from Prusa to Creality to whoever, part cooling is an afterthought. <laughs> it's a checkbox. Oh, we must have it. Plug one on. But I don't, I don't know if it's an afterthought, but you know, other manufacturers, I just don't think have dove down to the depths that you have, correct? Right. Yeah, you can, you can get good parts off of a stock Ender tree or a stock Prusa or whatever. You can get great parts. But there are part types that have areas and nooks and crannies where you won't get proper cooling because it's coming from just one point. Right? And so that's the thing is we want to create a, a cooling system that is the most encompassing possible to cover those, all those strange edge cases. It's here! 
The Frozen Sonic Mini 8KS has a build volume of 165 by 72 by 170. It's got a 22 micrometer XY resolution. It'll print at 80 millimeters per hour max speed, and it has an MSRP of $349 US. Coming up in a few weeks, we've got an amazing project planned with this and you're not gonna wanna miss it. A big thanks to Frozen for sponsoring this part of the episode, and now, right back to Hero Me. Now, one of the things I wanna ask you, because you've mentioned part cooling, and it's interesting, the modularity of this system, but I find it neat that someone can go and pick a, uh, an extruder, a hot end, an ABL sensor, and then you have all of the mounts ready to have the best cooling possible, is that right? That's correct, that's correct. So, this is the base, uh, and it's all about, uh, everything amounts to this. What makes it to, for a printer is I have a gantry adapter that merges between the X carriage of the printer and my system. I've got a, a unique little adapter plate for over 100 printers now. This is now standardized for the last year, two years. There's over 600 remixes and add-ons for the Ender series between Thingiverse and printables, etc. So there's a mount for the stock Ender 3 hot end. And that simply snaps together. So now we have a Bowden. You put the fans on, you get the idea, right? I want to take the extruder that came with that Ender 3. So I've got a mount that snaps on. And now we've got, using the original hardware, a direct drive for an Ender, for example. So you can take an Ender 3 stock and using these parts right here, use stock components, and you could make an Ender 3 direct drive just with some of your 3D printable STLs. Because it's so modular and it's Lego-like, all right, um, when you're ready to upgrade to change something, you just swap out the part that you want to go. So this happens to be a mount for a Bontec LGX. Oh, okay. That's a popular choice among upgrade people. Yeah. So there we go. I just swapped out the stock one for the Bontec, and now I've got a Bontec. And you go, well, gee, you know, that's an underpowered hot end for a Bontec. So why don't we uh, make it a volcano, right? So I have same setup. Take that out. Drop this one in. I want to mix it up and go to an orbiter because, you know, Stefan says the orbiter is the way to go. <laughs> so there now is an E3D V6 with an orbiter V2 mount. I love this. this. I love, love, love this. And part of the reason why is because the modularity allows someone who might be a little bit worried or anxious about an upgrade, the modularity allows them to then think of it as a Lego-esque piece and, and being to piece things together. And this this really takes out some of the worry. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's been all been tested and proved through. Um, I've, I've got to thank a lot of my patrons. I've got a, a patron now, uh, a group of about 2,500. 2,500, Andy, that's amazing. Thank you, um, and, and they've been very supportive and they've been a lot of them who've come in with a printer that I've never seen before, right? And so we then go look for a step file or a SDL of the X carriage. Oftentimes we don't find it uh, and so we end up I uh, have them take a photograph of the bare carriage, get their calipers out, take about two dozen me measurements. I can then create a gantry adapter for their X carriage that's unique to their mount points and unique to my mount points. Andy, this has been this has been a joy. This has been years in the making that I've wanted to meet you and have this conversation. And we could we could sit here for hours, but I know you got other people just waiting to come to your booth. What I want you to do is look right there and tell people how they can find out more about Hero Me and what you're doing. Okay, so uh, you can look me up on Printables, uh, Media Man 3D. Uh, you can look me up on Patreon, which is Media Man 3D, M-E-D-I-A-M-A-N 3D. Uh, you can support me there. Uh, and I think those are the two key places. Then, of course, my website, and the website is www.merlinmedia.com. The years in the making. If you've made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Modular print all the hero me things. And as always, high five. High five. Nailed it. Yes.